What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me, as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here for the fourth and final episode, episode excuse me, of our top 25 UNC football players of all time series. If you haven't seen the three other videos we've done, make sure you go check that one out. Just click our channel below and you'll find those linked in there. Make sure you go do that after this video is done, of course. And before we dive into this one, Make sure you head on over to our website, tarhillillustrated.com, and sign up to be a premium member for just eight thirty three a month. You get premium, you get access to our premium message boards. You get access to some stories on the front that are premium content. The only way you can see those is if you're signed up for just eight thirty three a month. There's also a ton of recruiting stuff and UNC football and UNC basketball stuff, of course, that goes strictly on our boards under the premium board. So if you want to see those, you have to be signed up. And if you're a true blue diehard Carolina fan, football, basketball, recruiting, whatever it may be, I, I think, I don't think you'll regret signing up and, and all the perks you get. I'm on the boards. AJ's on the boards. Dina and David Sisk as well are on the boards all the time. So after this video is done, click the description below. You'll see a link to our website in there. You can go sign up there for just eight thirty three a month but AJ let's dive into this one man we're, we're we're really in it now number seven through number one in this one this is the final episode that we're going to do we're obviously going to do seven in this one it's been the top 25 we do, we've been doing them in six increments but obviously this one's going to be uh seven included in this one and let's start man number seven on this list you got Lawrence Taylor I, I don't think any Carolina fan needs an introduction to this guy defensive end linebacker at Carolina from 1977 to 1980 First team all ACC is a senior 1980 ACC player of the year. Um, also another guy that's been named the 50 year 50 greatest ACC players ever team and his 16 sacks in 1980 is still a UNC single season record. I mean, everybody knows the name Lawrence Taylor or some people bill him as the greatest football player of all time, really for what he did in the NFL as well. Now we were talking a little bit off camera and you said there might be a little controversy about him being number seven on this list because of how well renowned he is for what he did in the, at the next level, especially. But when we get to the rest of the guys on this list, I think you'll understand why he's here, but one of the greatest to ever do it. And, and obviously maybe didn't have the, the, the Carolina, the, the Carolina career that he did in the NFL, but Lawrence Taylor still had a phenomenal time in Chapel Hill. And it is definitely one of the greatest to ever do it. I don't think anybody's going to argue that point. Well, it's controversial if you don't fully understand that this is based solely yep. on their UNC careers. Whatever these guys did, a minute they played their last snap at Carolina, it doesn't matter. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the end. That's where it all ends. And with LT, you know, he played special teams and he was injured and he really took off his junior year and uh, his senior year. We talked about Dre Bly, like as a freshman. LT senior year is one of the great single seasons anybody has ever had a defensive player has ever had in ACC history. I mean, he was unbelievable. Uh, the sack against, you know, they, they struggled winning in Death Valley. They haven't won at Clemson too often in their history, but maybe the biggest play he ever made was a sack at Clemson. I believe it was in 1980 when they went down there and won. That kind of came up in the top 10. That was his senior year. Uh, they had really got the program. That was their first final top 10 ranking since the Tutu era. Mm -hmm. uh, they were finished 11 uh, once in the uh, Bill Dooley era. I think the Macaulay, Don, John Bunning teams finished 11th one year, but uh, they were awesome. But that was a that was back when the ACC was still, you know, really reaching hard for some credibility. So maybe those Carolina teams today would be ranked higher. And maybe those defenses would be more highly regarded in the, in the history of the sport. But from from a Carolina uh, standpoint. They were awesome. Among that was that eighty team was really, really, really good. They had one game uh, that kind of defined their season. Unfortunately for them, when they went to Oklahoma seven to seven at the half, they got blown out in the second half. Yeah, Oklahoma did that to pretty much everybody back in those days. But LT was phenomenal. He changed the sport at the next level. Mm -hmm. He's the greatest defensive player in the history of the NFL. He changed the sport, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know NFL defenses you know, evolved in a different direction after Lawrence Taylor hit the ground running as a rookie. He was awesome as a rookie in the NFL. And and uh, his issues have been well documented. But I think uh, from a UNC perspective, um, and that's what we're doing this standpoint, that's what we're doing this on. Uh, he needs to be totally, totally judged just on the football. 
Don't take the other stuff into it. And he needs to be totally judged in this ranking just as a Tar Heel. Uh, if you if it was, this was about NFL, just like with Michael Jordan, you would have him number one. Yeah. But it's not about that. But number seven is a really good place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, he was excellent for two years. He was great as a senior, unbelievable athlete. And if you could see clips of him back then, and then you watched him a lot in the NFL, you could see that guy. Everyone got to know in the NFL. You could see him just kind of burgeoning there his last two years at Carolina, especially that last year. 16 sacks in an 11 game regular season. Pretty good, man. Pretty yeah. good. It doesn't get much. Like, like I said, 1988 C Player of the Year is a senior, too. So, I mean, you get senior season. I'm glad you singled that one out because just big time and kind of crazy to think that depending on what side of the fence you're on. I mean, Carolina's arguably got the greatest NBA player of all time, Michael Jordan. Some people want to throw LeBron in there now. Not going to go into that discussion. No, no. And then football got lost. The greatest time. NBA player, the greatest defensive football player in history, and the greatest women's soccer player of all time, all from yeah. North Carolina. Pretty wild, man. I mean, it's crazy to think, and especially when you look at the history of Carolina. Some, some, a lot of people on the outside looking in don't really associate Carolina as being a football school. But if there's one thing I've and, and other people should learn from the series we've done. I mean, Carolina's got a rich football history as well as basketball and, like you said, women's soccer as well. So, so yeah, pretty cool on this list. You, you say the name LT, you don't have to be a Carolina fan to know that. A lot of people, who, if you're an NFL football fan, if you're a football fan in general, you're going to know who Lawrence Taylor was. So, yeah. It, Unless I, you're a Chargers fan. Yeah, exactly. Right? Chargers fans think of LaDainian and Tomlin. Yeah, good point, good point. And, you know, the great running back as well. But, you know, LT, one of the, one of the greatest uh, defensive players, if not the greatest defensive player to ever do it now hey just move on to number six william fuller defensive tackle played from 1980 to 1983 two-time first team ap all-american the only unanimous all acc selection in 1983 three-time first team all acc college football hall of famer and like you've heard many times over the last couple episodes named to the 50 year 50 greatest acc players ever team as well I mean, back early 80s, um, good period for Carolina football. I Fuller, big-time defensive tackle for the Tar Heels back then. And, you know, you look at those accolades, man, three-time first-team All-ACC, and you just see the College Football Hall of Fame. I mean, had to be included in this top ten somewhere. Just a, a phenomenal defensive player for the Tar Heels as well. Well, defensive lineman had 20 career sacks, but also nine pass breakups. He was an incredible athlete who, at the NFL level, was really you – know, he, he was in the shadow of LT. Yeah. And you could argue he was a better college player than LT because he was good longer. Mm -hmm. the LT exploded the second half of his college career. William Fuller was really good out of the gate. He was on really, really good defenses, excellent Carolina teams. That was one of the, the better stretches in UNC football history. And William Fuller was a big part of that and played uh, uh, quite a while in the NFL. And um, he's a guy that when you look back and think about, you know, linemen that could move, linemen that could plug a gap, but also – chased out of back, you know, that could go defend the screen pass, could, could drop and, and, you know, and if football's a little different than back then, you'd have the classic tight ends, you know, cross over yeah. the middle or something like that. If it was within 10 yards of line of scrimmage, it wouldn't be a shock to see a guy like William Fuller dropping back in coverage. Lyman drop back in coverage a lot more now than they did then. William Fuller would be even more of a beast today than he was back then because of the athletic ability that he had and the way – he, he was one of those guys that would be an every down guy. You know, Mac was talking to us at the end of spring about they need to find their rush guys. They need to find their rundown guys. William Fuller was a rundown guy. He was a first down guy, second down guy, third down guy. If you're going for him fourth, he was that guy. He could do pretty much everything. And that's why he's number six on this list. And College Football Hall of Fame, totally justified. Uh, if you could find film of Carolina, people will want to go hunt Lawrence Taylor, but you're going to run across William Fuller film. Mm -hmm. Do it and take a look. He was exceptional. Yeah, big time, big time player for the Tar Heels. I don't think Mac would mind him having on his, him on his D line this coming season as well. He'd probably still dominate. You know what I mean? He probably he probably cut arm off to have that. So yeah, big. There time. are three linemen in this top seven that they would yeah, take. A hundred percent. Well, we'll that's a lineman they would take. Yeah, we'll come to a couple more of those here in a second. But, AJ, let's move on to the next guy, number five on this list, Don McCauley. I think every Carolina fan, true Carolina football fan, knows that name for sure. Uh, running back from the Tar Heels to 1968 to 1970, two-time ACC Player of the Year, two-time first-team All-ACC selection, 1970 first-team AP All-American as well. Another college football Hall of Famer. Get, get used to hearing that. You're going to hear that a few more times on this list. And as you've heard many times before, named to the 50-year, 50, 50 greatest ACC players ever team. Obviously, you know, 
a little bit further back, you know, 68, uh, late sixties, early seventies. But man, when you hear the, if you hear the name Don McCauley, you automatically think of it a really good running back. And when he played back then and you look at those accolades, man, college football hall of famer, I mean, no surprise that he's in the top 10 and well, top five on this list, I should say. Well, everybody watching this has heard of OJ Simpson. Some maybe because of what happened in the nineties, but if <laughs> so you think reasons. of OJ Simpson, if you think of him strictly as a football player, you know, you, you're, you could argue greatest running back of all time. You can make that argument. Um, I, I, I'm not going to say that he was, but a lot of people will. Uh, won the Heisman Trophy in 68. Great, 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 great college player at Southern Cal. Well, Don McCauley in 1970 broke his single season rushing record, 1,720 yards. And that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And that helped put Carolina football more on the map. And let's go back and think about 1970, what, how important that year was in UNC football history. Uh, Bill Dooley had taken over the program. He was instilling a toughness, a chew glass, hands in the dirt, uh, kind of mentality with Carolina football, which I think helped change the ACC and move it forward and made it better uh, in the 70s and then 80s as a result. And Don McCauley was as important a part of that, that and those guys at block for him as anybody else because he was so, so good. Um, he was, uh, like you said, the two-time ACC player of the year. But that was an era where North Carolina football really started to matter. Mm. Uh, the, the mid late fifties, the sixties, other than the Gator Bowl team in '63, they were, oh, it was terrible yeah. in football. <laughs> they were awful. They went to Dooley and they said, "Don't just win, change us, make it matter again." And he did. And Don McCauley was as important a part of changing UNC football, making it matter again, as anybody that was in the program. He played with John Bunning, who was a head coach at Carolina for a while. I got to know Don a little bit during those years. He was. Uh, he could tell a really good John Bunning story yeah. and tell some really good Bill Dooley stories. And if you ever get a chance to listen to John Bunning do his Bill Dooley impersonation, please do so. It's really good. Uh, but, the, he, you know, we talked before about a couple of guys because of the era they played in. Well, McCulley was outstanding, played in a very, very important era. And I think that that era kind of lasted. You know, some guys, they played at a time where they were really good for a stretch and didn't carry. Well, you go back to the late 60s or 1970, North Carolina football has mattered for the most part since then. It's had its flare-ups, it's had its down periods, Mm -hmm. but it has been a lot more important to the UNC base and ACC football in general. Mm -hmm. Um, You go back and look at the ACC in the 60s, it's stunk. (laughs) But Carolina started getting good, Maryland started getting good again, Clemson started mattering again. And they were all playing that grinded out stuff, although Maryland had some better quarterbacks than some of the other other uh, schools did. But mm-hmm. that period for UNC is so important to the program's history and in the ACC history, as yeah. I've said like three times now. Yeah, no, I mean, because yeah. I'm trying to emphasize it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know. They don't, they look at Donald Collins' football card, and he's a solid NFL player with the Colts and stuff. But man, as a college player, he was fantastic. And Javante Williams, all those touchdowns he went. He scored a late touchdown in Miami to ensure that he broke Don McCauley's single season touchdown record. Yep. Yep. And yeah, Don McCauley. That lasted 50 years. Yep. Big time player. I know he's just a guy that's done it. And he also, when I always think back to, you know, a few years ago, I think it took it down now, but they used to have the, the greats in Keenan Stadium kind of littered across the, the stadium on the little board. A lot of people used to bang on it when they used to uh, – well, during the games and stuff like that, if you were sitting on the first row of the upper deck. And that is one name that I always remember seeing up there. There's a ton of them up there, obviously. But Don McCauley was one that just stands out in my mind of a guy that was just so good at his position uh, and what he did back in the, like I said, late 60s, early 70s. And like you said, kind of set the standard in some ways for what the program and kind of helped it get to where it did and kind of, you know, be able to, like you mentioned, not great – before him but after him really pretty consistently at least good, decent um up, up until him so yeah don mccauley just a, a big time running back for the tar heels aj let's move on to number four julius those, those thousand yard rushers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. before we do peppers those thousand hey, yard ahead. rushers we talked about in the last video running back to you that started with don mccauley yep mm-hmm. set the standard man trend yeah, started turning out thousand yard seasons mm-hmm. yeah go look at their list their chronological list of thousand yard rushers and go to don mccauley and then all those dudes yep. after him Somebody had to be the first, and like you said, McCauley, definitely the first guy to do that as a running back for the Tar Heels. Like I mentioned, though, number four on this list, Julius Peppers, defensive end, put it Carolina from 99 to 2001. I mean, I don't really care how old you are. You know who Julius Peppers is at this point, especially if you're a Carolina fan. Two-time All-American, two-time first-team All-ACC, 2001 Lombardi Award winner, 2001 
Bednarik Award winner, Bill Willis Trophy Award winner in 2001. That 2001 season, his final one was a fantastic year for him. Named the nation's top two sport athlete in 2001 by Sporting News, as many of you know. Played at Carolina as a basketball player. Was pretty good, too. Uh, and also a guy that was named to the 50 or 50 greatest ACC players ever team. You talk about an athlete. I think if we were doing the greatest athletes in Carolina history, Julius Peppers is way up this list. I mean, you talk about a guy that could do it on the football field, do it on the basketball court for Carolina. And not only that, I know we're not, you know, counting their NFL careers, but I mean, just as long as he played in the NFL, he retired a couple of years ago. I mean, he was in the NFL for forever. And that just kind of speaks to me is, is how good of an athlete, how good of a player he was on the football field. And I mean, when you just look at these accolades, I think that might be the longest list that I've read, read out so far. And it, I think I'll top it here in a couple, a, a couple, in a couple more players here when we get to number two and number one, but man, that's just a long list of what he was able to do at the college level. And obviously only played three seasons, but uh, had a big time, big time NFL career. And definitely one of the greatest, at least in my opinion, one of the greatest defensive players of all time. I'm not going to name the writer who said this. He's, he's no longer with us now. But um, we were walking out of Carolina's basketball locker room together in the 2001 season, 2000, 2001 season. And, uh, you know, Peppers almost always would do his post-game interviews with his shirt off. And it's just, you don't see basketball players built like that very often, yep. okay? <laughs> and I remember walking out of the locker room with him. He was one of these guys I looked up to, and I was always picking his brain and wanted to see how he did things because I wanted to learn. And he turned to me and he said, you know, if Superman was a college athlete, it would be him, that guy. And that guy was Julius Peppers. If you, you could easily find the – video clips of him alley one-handed dunks on the break in basketball and i'm talking about basketball first for a reason because that re if you're a ridiculous athlete on the basketball court imagine how that translates to the football field yeah. especially when you're herculean strong mm -hmm. you're super smart you've got incredible instincts you've got a hand, the best hands of a defensive end you'll ever find at the college football level you know, that's what was, look at the pick six against Oklahoma. Look at the touchdown, uh, the pick uh, touchdown against Duke at the end of the 2000 season. Disgusting. What kind of an amazing athlete this guy was. Yeah. Great athlete who was also a great football player and a good enough basketball player. He was skilled. You know, he did things within the framework of what they were doing. And sometimes great athletes are always highly, highly skilled. They rely so much on their athletic ability. But Julius Peppers was an excellent football player. He was a hand in the dirt, get off the snap, uh, excellent technique, beat a tackle, get to the quarterback. It wasn't just his natural gifts that got him there. And that's why he was so good at the, in, in the NFL. That's why he had so many sacks, because he was a skilled, smart, fundamentally sound player. But then you add that amazing gift that he that he had and you, know, you could argue greatest athlete in Carolina history. I'm not going to get into that discussion right now, but he, you could certainly make that argument because he was also skilled. It wasn't just run fast, jump high, wiry, sideline, sideline, athletic ability, speed, all that kind of stuff. He could buy it all. And um, that's pretty impressive. Your list of greatest players in your program history in, in, in college football because – there wasn't really anything he could do. He won the Lombardi Award, the Benaric Award. There's not a lot of guys that won those national awards in UNC history. He was even, I think, ninth in the Heisman voting. Yeah, I think you're right. 2000, mm -hmm. 2000, in 2000. So he had it all, and he backed it up at the next level for sure. Yeah, played forever in the league and, you know, just – Great athlete. I mean, like I said, we won't go into the discussion of greatest athlete in Carolina history of all time, but I mean, you definitely, like you said, you definitely make a strong case for it. And I'm sure a large majority of Carolina fans wouldn't argue if, if you put him at the top of that list. So yeah, Julius Peppers is just a, a guy that in uh, North Carolina guy as well down from, from Rocky Mount, you know, not too far from Chapel Hill. And, you know, so big time, big time, not only a Carolina player, but just, you know, one of the greatest athletes and football players definitely in the history of the state. So Big time, big time player in Julius Peppers, and that's why he's number four on this list. Now, moving on to number three, we're in the top three here, finally entering that realm. Art Weiner, an in that played from 1946 to 1949. His number 50 jersey number is retired by University, another guy on that list, which I think that alone can kind of tell you how good he was during his era 
of football, which was right after the end of World War II from 46 to 49, two-time first-team All-American, three-time first-team All-Southern Conference, and college football Hall of Famer was inducted back in 19. 19- 92. You're not going to find a ton of highlights of these, this guy. It, it can be hard to find a lot of information on this guy, but Art Weinerman, just a, a, a big time, big time, really, really good Carolina football player back in his heyday. And, and no doubt and no reason to see him in the top three here. Just one of the greatest to ever do it at, at Carolina. You will find a lot of pictures and yeah, many of them also in the, also in the photograph is Charlie Choo Choo Justice. Yep. And, and, and the thing about, what, about Art is that uh, was he overlooked because of Choo Choo? Because they play at the same time? Yeah. Or was playing with Choo Choo and over time people have romanticized that era so much that maybe they've propped him up? That's a good point. To be maybe a, a higher ranking than, than where some believe that certainly he might deserve. I think three makes sense because, again, you just don't retire. The, you retire a number. A guy was able to have so much success while Choo Choo was setting a new and different standard that has not been eclipsed since then. So I think if you're able to have unbelievable success and statistical success, when there's another guy just racking up the stats as well, that means you're pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. And, and Art, Art Weiner was obviously very, very good. That You just read off the accolades that they're there. But this is also, we talked about how good the teams were in your era. That's the golden era. The choo-choo years, the liner years, that's the best stretch in Carolina football history. Everybody made a big deal about going back, going to an Orange Bowl, first major bowl game in 71 years. Well, who were the guys that were that took them to the last one? It was choo-choo and it was liner. They took them to three major bowl games when they were in Carolina. So that is the standard era. That's the era that this current program has an opportunity to perhaps match or even surpass. We'll have to wait a few more years to see what they do. But they will be – this era will be judged against that era if they're able to uh, take a couple more steps forward. That's how good Carolina was during that time. They were actually right now in the country for a week. Uh, they had um, – the go back and look at the bowls. Go back and look at the rankings. Go back and look at how they were treated nationally. Uh, covers national magazines. And there were times when Art Weiner was there with Choo Choo. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was Robin. Choo Choo was Batman. But you know what? Robin got credit for locking up all the bad guys, too. Exactly. He was a part of it as well. Batman couldn't have done it all by himself. Mm-hmm. MJ had Scottie Pippen. Yeah. And I think Art Weiner, you could argue, may be better in comparison than a guy like Scottie Pippen was. So uh, his place in history should be where it is here, and it will probably always be there or very close to it. Uh, he's sort of a forgotten name to some because they just think of the choo-choo era. Yeah. But if there was no choo-choo, Art Weiner would still be on this list. 100%. He was that good. Yeah, just a fantastic era for, for Carolina football right after the war period. And and um, I, I, I'm going to plug this right now. We'll obviously get to Choo Choo here in a second. But you and your dad, I believe, did a podcast on Choo Choo and kind of that area, era, excuse me, of Carolina football back then, which I thought was just a fascinating podcast. One of my favorites that I've ever that we've ever done on this channel to listen to and especially to kind of go back and edit and look at that time period. I'm a, I'm a huge World War II buff as well. So anything in the 40s is just fascinating to me. And if so, if you haven't, go check out that podcast. I'll put the link in below. We'll obviously get to Choo Choo here in a few minutes as well. But before okay, we – Very quickly, yeah, just go so ahead people ahead. understand why my dad and I did a podcast, and I'm not, we didn't, I know you were going to do this. I'm not plugging, but he wrote a book yep. about college football during World War II. Mm-hmm. And the reason Choo Choo Matter was because he played for the Bainbridge Naval Station mm-hmm. during the war, actually. And that was before, he was a college football star before he became a North Carolina player. So that's why we actually did that. So I just didn't want people thinking that my dad and I hop on any podcast and stuff. No, no, definitely not. Yeah, it, it was a great podcast too, because I remember y'all touched on that that era when he got to Carolina as well and just how good he was. And just fascinating to hear because your dad obviously did a ton of research to write that book. And like I mentioned, one of my, one of my favorite podcasts that, that we've done on this channel uh, to date. So yeah, definitely go check that one out. You can find that one in, in the description below. Number two on this list, before we get to Choo Choo, I'm sure everybody already knows is number one. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull the cat out of the bag on that one. Amos Lawrence played at running back 1977 to 1980. Third team All-American, ACC Rookie of the Year in 77. Two-time first team All-ACC selection. Co-MVP of the Gator Bowl. MVP of the Blue Bonnet Bowl in 1980. Another guy that was named to the 50-year, 50, 50 greatest ACC players of all time. And he's also UNC's all-time leading rusher 
with 4,391 yards on the ground. So, I mean, we said it earlier. I don't know if it was in this video or the last one. I can't remember it now. You can make a strong case for Carolina being running back you and add Amos Lawrence to the list because he's at the top of it when it comes to just the great backs that Carolina's had in its history. I guess if you, you – know, we're basing this solely on Carolina accomplishments and decorated. I mean, in basketball, people will – when we get near the top of that, they'll – I'll emphasize most decorated and how important that is in the program history. Lawrence isn't as decorated as some guys that he's ranked ahead of. And part of that is because of the era he played. And let's not forget that there were, there were guys like George Rogers playing and Charles White playing in that era, you know, national guys. So he didn't get the same kind of national claim. He wasn't running for 2000 yards or anything like that, but he, he was the second college football player to ever run for a thousand yards in each of his four seasons. The only one before him was Tony Dorsett. And there were only two for a long time. I think mm-hmm. a guy named Denvis Manns did it in Mexico State in the late 90s, and that kind of brought famous Amos back up in some of the news uh, coverage of what, uh, of what uh, Denvis Manns was doing. And there have been a few that have done it since then. But famous Amos also did it as the, not the only feature back. He shared time with other guys. Mm-hmm. And that's the way Carolina played back then. But I think another really important factor here is he connected the Dooley and Crum eras. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Dick Crum eventually was fired because they hit mediocrity in the mid-80s. But, you know, initially for a while, Crum inherited from Dooley what they were doing. And, and they were a little bit better for a while. They had two top ten teams. As a senior, uh, when Lawrence's senior year, the Carolina finished in the top 10. They went, I believe, 11 and 1. And, um, and he was a big part of that. You know, that, that whole running mentality, the Mike Voigt mentality that we talked about, that was Carolina football. And, a guy, and, and when Crum took over and, and moved the program forward, they won four straight bowl games. A big part of that was because of what Amos Amos was able to do. Now, there was some controversy with him because he wasn't decorated as some other players were, about what to do with his name historically. Do you, do you honor him on the facade of the upper deck in the stadium? And, and they made some tweaks and they got him in there. But I think he's probably the most underrated Carolina football player of all time. Mm-hmm. I think he, unless you were, you know, 15 or 20 back during that time, he might be the most underappreciated Carolina football player of all time. And I would think if he played today, imagine how people are thinking it's so amazing what Michael Carter did, two straight thousand yard seasons. Well, imagine if Michael Carter also did that as a freshman in the sophomore, or as a freshman in the sophomore. That's famous, Amos. Michael Carter, if he did that for four years, he'd be on this list. Oh, exactly. And so famous Amos was exceptional. You have to understand the time that he played and the importance of the ground game and connecting Dooley to Crum. Because Crum didn't – the program didn't slip right away. They won for a while. And, and, and uh, the Choo-choo, famous Ames – we got a lot of great nicknames. Up there, yeah, right? I know, right? Famous Ames Lawrence was a huge part of that. And, uh, you know, I, I'd be interesting to see what some people who watched him play, what, what they say about him being ranked this high and their memories of watching him. Because, man, he was a workhorse. He could scoop. And uh, he was excellent as a true freshman right out of the gate. There aren't many true freshmen that have been as good as him. We talked about Dre Bly earlier. He's probably the best true freshman in Carolina history, but famous Amos Lawrence wasn't far behind. Yeah, 100%. Another great nickname on this list, which we've talked about. And, you know, coming up to, uh, for number one, arguably, you can make an argument for the greatest nickname of all time, but the number one player on this list, AJ, which I've mentioned already, already, already pulled the cat out of the bag, Charlie Choo Choo Justice halfback that played from Carolina from 1946 to 1949. I mean, you know the name. Got a statue outside the Kenyon Football Center. And uh, if you're watching this and you're a Carolina fan, you know who this guy is. College Football Hall of Famer, four-time AP All-American, 1948 Walter Camp Memorial Trophy, which was a a winner, excuse me, which is awarded to the best player in college football. 1948 Maxwell Award, which is top player in the country. 1948 National Player of the Year, four-time All-Southern Conference, two-time Southern Conference Player of the Year. Just, I mean, when you talk about Carolina greats, I think most people would have him at the top of his list. Obviously played back in the late 40s, so long time ago now, but no doubt about him being up there. You got a statue outside the Keenan Football Center. You're really the only guy that has one. It's hard not to put him on the top of this list, but what he meant to the program, what not only what he meant to the program, what he meant to college football and that era of college football, 
um, should not be undermined. Just just one of the greatest football players of, of all time, one of the greatest running backs of all time in college. And don't think anybody's really going to make the argument that he's, you know, the greatest football player in Carolina football history. And the Carolina blue hash mark at the 22 yard yep. line. Yep. College football programs. If you can dig way back in the time and find your icons and keep them iconic, that's all part of the pageantry of the sport. I mean, yep. Ramesses, Ramesses was born in the 1920s with the battering ram mm-hmm. uh, back in 1923, 24, that era. Yeah. Um, you know, if you go to, you go to Iowa, uh, at, you know, you look at the Mal Kinnick statue, that's to them what Choo Choo is to North Carolina. So um, Choo Choo, Tutu did it all. I mean, that was back in the era of the single wing stuff. You know, he took direct snaps. People talk about um, the different formations that we have now, Wildcat, stuff like that. Tutu was, was running, passing, kicking, doing everything. Uh, he did it all. Yeah. And the, the, what's really fascinating, and you hit on this a few minutes ago, and, I, and I'm not promoting my dad's stuff. It's just more how I gained my knowledge. I did a lot of research to help him with his book. And Tutu was a college football star before he got to Carolina because of the Bainbridge days. And to me, that's what's so fascinating. World War II college football is really, really fascinating because of all the different guys who yeah. came from different schools. There were pro players playing, pro coaches coaching, and all that kind of stuff. And, and then there was this young kid named Choo Choo. And the reason he got the nickname Choo Choo was actually when he was at Bainbridge when someone said he, he ran a play where he ran 60 yards for a touchdown, but ran like 100 120 yards because exactly. he was cutting back and forth. And when he broke free, the guy said he just took off like a runaway choo-choo. Mm. And so he was legendary when he got to Carolina. He never let anybody down. He was there. The, the greatest four-year stretch of program history. I think their lowest ranking was number 16. Played in three major bowl games. He's the He was the only two-time runner-up. Finished second in the Heisman Valley twice until Darren McFadden in Arkansas, I believe, in 07 and 08. Mm-hmm. So that you win another, what, 40 years, mm-hmm. uh, 40, 50, 50 years, 55 mm-hmm. years, or whatever it was before another guy uh, was twice finished, twice finished second in the Heisman Valley. And that's how good he was. Mm-hmm. And he was legendary. There are songs made about him, a book, number of books written about him back then. And since then, um, kind of illustrate just the greatness, the legendary nature and status of Choo Choo. And um, you can argue, and Frank DeFord has kind of said that his book, Everybody's All-American, which a movie was made, mm-hmm. and if you haven't seen the movie, it's actually a really good movie, he modeled his, the character of the, of the running back in that movie after Charlie Chichi Justice. That's awesome. And Frank DeFord's greatest, in my opinion, the greatest sports writer of all time. Mm-hmm. It's an incredible book. It's a great movie. It had Jessica Lange in there, and, and I think uh, – Dennis Quaid uh, okay. played the role of the running back. So yeah. if you look at the book on the back cover, I believe that there's some Carolina stuff on there. So, um, hey, you could say Choo Choo had a movie made about him. Who yeah. else is it? How many guys have had that? You know, they were actually really, really good. They make movies about the Rudys of the world, but yeah, not the great ones all the yeah. time. So, it's, I mean, the statue is phenomenal. I think Carolina should do more statues for football and so, basketball. Yeah. I go around all over the country seeing all these different schools. Um, if you go to Pittsburgh, you see what they've done with their plaques and statues for football and basketball. It's, it's really awesome. It's right out in front of the Peterson Event Center. Um, Carol, I think Carol has to do more stuff with it, like that. But Choo Choo should always be the biggest and most prominent one. Mm-hmm. He is to Carolina football what Babe Ruth is to baseball, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, although I do think there's a chance, you know, if Sam wins a Heisman, leads him to a national title or something crazy yeah, like man. that, he pass him by. But it would require – doing something like that to pass Choo Choo by. He is numero uno with 50 exclamation marks and, uh, mm-hmm. and deservedly so and will probably stay in that spot. You know, when you do one of these in 30 years, Jacob, you're mm-hmm. going to probably have Choo Choo number one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just – it's hard not to have him up there when you look at how good he was and just also what he meant for college football and Carolina football at the time, kind of just, you know, the first great to ever do it. And you're still talking about him today as number one, just speaks volume. And like I said, I don't think a lot of guys are going to argue with him being at the top of that list. But when you're still at the top of the list, you know, somewhat 70 years later, I think that tells you all you need to know about just how good Charlie Choo Choo Justice was. And I was listening to the song before I hopped on here, man. Catchy tune. I like it, man. I, I was all over it. I'm, I'm a fan of – I'm a huge 
40s era guy so i'm, I'm they're just okay. my favorite era in american history and I, I just love that kind of stuff so great song as well go check that one out <laughs> because it's an era so like no one would ever pop it in right now and no nah, you're not riding down the street to that anymore yeah. <laughs> but if you think about it represents an historical component to it yeah, yeah. absolutely it's awesome it's no awesome doubt about it. yeah and I, I know I've plugged it a few times and I'm not just doing this to do it. Definitely go listen to the podcast. You can find the description that AJ and, and his dad did. Cause I can't stress enough how cool it was and how many things I just learned from that podcast that I had no idea about. I didn't even know he played at Bainbridge before he came to Carolina. And it's just fascinating yeah, to hear. It's kind pretty of amazing stuff. It is. Yeah. I went up to Bainbridge and did a lot of the research. I went to the, whatever's left of the field that they yep. played on. Uh, just really fascinating stuff. And by the way, they should play that Choo Choo song in Keenan during warmups and just show a Choo Choo video. They should. I'm serious. Yeah, they should. You got a history. You, you have some history. Reach back and grab onto it. Embrace it. Yeah. You know, yeah. There, there's, it's okay to look back. It's okay to fill in the cracks with, hey, we've got something here. Basketball does it all the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, football and basketball have two very different histories. But when you have a guy like Choo Choo in your past, don't be shy to promote it. Definitely not. It's Definitely cultural not. stuff. And mm -hmm. that's what I love about college football. You, that 150 year series that ESPN did last year, so much of it was about the culture of college football. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's North Carolina needs to continue to try to connect to its strong periods in the past mm -hmm. to, to, to give a better, fuller presentation of where the program actually is. 100%. Yeah. Charlie Choo Choo Justice at the top of this list and, and deservingly so. So that's going to do it for, for our four part series on this. I mean, if you haven't seen on our website, AJ has been rolling out little quick kind of snapshots and articles on each one of these guys. So if you just click the description below, you get a link in there and you'll find um, the, the top seven uh, that we've ran previously uh, throughout the week during this week. So definitely go read those. If you want to little, learn a little bit more about the history of that as well. And if you're signed up to our premium boards, which you can do for just eight thirty three a month, definitely go on there and get in the discussion, offer your two cents on these rankings. We love to kind of have that discussion about how you feel about it and where you feel like some of these guys ranked and also maybe memories you have for some of the older people that are a part of our boards from watching these guys, some of the guys that played back in the eighties and, you know, eighties and nineties and including those guys as well well so definitely get in on that conversation on our boards we'll have that posted as well would love to hear everybody's opinions on that but thanks for watching this series if you haven't seen the other three videos we've done just click our youtube channel below you'll find those linked in there and definitely go check that those out if you want to learn a little bit more about the series how it originated what it means and, and just kind of the other guys that are included in the top 25 unc football players um, and we have and we have basketball coming up Yep, basketball coming up as well, which is going to be arguably even more fun because, you know, we, we all know the rich Carolina basketball history that the program have. So definitely stay tuned for that as well. But if you haven't seen it, like I mentioned, definitely go check those videos out. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.